Hey, and welcome back to another video. So in my last old phone challenge video, I tried out a phone from 2014 for two days, which was quite an interesting and fun experience. So this time around, I decided to go a bit further back and use an unusual phone from 10 years ago. I tried using it for two days straight, and um, it didn't really go that well, to say the least. This is the Motorola MB300 backflip, a really weird phone from 2010. And as you can tell by its name, it flips backwards, and is actually the only phone on earth that flips this way. I bought this phone a few days back and did a video on it which you can find in the card above and down in the description below. But before we get into this video, don't forget to hit that like button and check out my channel, and if you like what you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also hit that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm also on Discord and Instagram to which I post teasers and behind the scenes and all the other stuff that I don't post to my YouTube channel too, and you can find me on those using the links down in the description below. Alright, let's jump right in. So as usual with these challenges, I only use my iPhone 11 to keep my Apple Watch fitness going and to change watches when needed, apart from that, I never touched it. So firstly, let's discuss the best part about me carrying the Motorola backflip around my college. And that's the attention it got when people noticed its weird look. I got asked many questions like, why'd you get that thing? Why is there a keyboard at the back of that phone? And why on earth are you using that thing in 2020? Many people thought it was really cool and some were surprised that it still works when I told them its age. So the backflip's weird design was a huge change from using a modern smartphone like the iPhone 11. Its thickness and form factor took a while to get used to, but I soon learned to appreciate the keyboard and trackpad at the back. I also had to be careful with this phone as its hinge is really fragile and probably could break really easily. I had to be careful in general as it's also a pretty rare phone that I would hate to break. So taking a closer look at this phone and we can see that it has its volume rockers, micro USB port with an LED light and dedicated camera shutter button on one side, the hinge on the other side, the QWERTY keyboard and camera at the back and the headphone jack and power button at the top. In its open position, the trackpad is revealed behind the display and it also provides access to its battery and expansion bay. The phone is well built and feels solid in the hand, but as mentioned before, with any flip phone, it has a major weak point which is its hinge. The display on this thing is a 3.1 inch LCD capacitive touchscreen with a resolution of 320 by 480 pixels, 186 pixels per inch and an amazingly 2010 50% screen to body ratio, all the way down from 79% on the iPhone 11. Talk about a change! The display is towards the darker side and is something you'd expect from a mid-range smartphone from 2010. Now you'd think that I hated it, but I actually didn't mind it, since I play around with older devices almost every day. However, an average user in 2020 would find this phone's display absolutely repulsive. It's also protected by Corning Gorilla Glass, probably of the first generation, but I cannot confirm this. The software running on the Motorola Backflip is well, to put it simply, ancient. Android 1.5 Cupcake with Motorola's Moto Blur UI to be specific. The phone is upgradable to 2.1 Eclair, however, I ran into some issues when trying to update it and also could not find an update file for it online. The fact that it's running the OS it shipped with was interesting and also the reason I could not use this phone for even half a day without giving up. The Play Store wouldn't work, YouTube wouldn't load, I could not add any of my accounts to it, the built-in browser is well, absolutely pure potato, and the amount of errors I received while trying to attempt to do the above were quite amusing. The plethora of bloat apps could not be removed and the fact that this version of Android has the camera app separated from the video recorder and the photos separated from videos in two separate galleries was pretty nostalgic. The phone also has a separate options button that adapts depending on the app you're on, giving quick access to all the different options within each app, a feature that I honestly wouldn't mind having in a modern day smartphone. 
The built-in trackpad was quite fun to use when in its unfolded position and could have been even better if I was able to use it on an app such as Facebook or Instagram. Taking a look under the hood and we can see that the Motorola backflip is powered by a single core Qualcomm MSM7201A clocked in at 528 MHz, which is the same processor that's on the HTC Dream or T-Mobile G1, which was the world's first Android phone. It's more than enough to power this phone and also features an Adreno 130S its GPU, 512MB of internal storage and 256MB of RAM. It also has a micro SD expansion port. The camera on the Motorola backflip was positioned on the physical keyboard which again is quite unusual. The 5 megapixel autofocus shooter is backed by a single LED flash and can record video at 30fps in CIF. I initially thought the camera was absolute garbage but was deceived by the dark display and when I loaded them onto my computer was surprised to find really decent pictures for their time. The camera heavily depends on lighting conditions and would be considered average by 2010 standards. And here is a video sample as well, which is also quite decent. So you may ask, where's the selfie camera on this thing? It does not have one, but why would it when you can just flip the phone over and use the rear camera itself? The Motorola Backflip features a 1400mAh battery which surprisingly lasts quite long even today and probably was not used much when it was new. So within the half day that I did use this phone and eventually gave up, I can easily say that it's not possible to use the Motorola Backflip in 2020 as with many other phones from 2010 such as the iPhone 4, Google Nexus 1, Samsung Galaxy S1 and HTC Evo 4G. Phones of this age usually cannot access their app stores, have issues connecting to modern Wi-Fi routers, reject attempts at logging into accounts, and have serious bugs which make them impossible to use. The only slight exception could be the iPhone 4 which was supported for a long time and can actually still access the app store and Apple's other services. So finally that's it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that like button and check out my channel and if you like what you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.